In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a useful shortcut for getting rid of stray hairs and going from here to here in just a couple of minutes. Hey there, Michael Volshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrantshot and also at vibrantshot.com. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can quickly and easily get rid of a cluster of stray hairs, just like you see here. And basically, it's this kind of stuff that is the reason why the suicide rate is as high as it is among retouchers, because if you have to go through this strand by strand, um, it's just an absolute nightmare. So um, there are shortcuts to getting rid of stray hairs. And typically what we do is if we have a fairly even background, what we just do is create a new layer over top of our layer, grab our clone stamp tool, make sure that we are sampling current and below, flow rate is high and we have a nice soft brush. And basically we're just going to start blending in the background over top of our stray hairs, covering them up uh, in a fairly liberal fashion. And then once they're all covered, basically we're going to throw a mask around this layer and just bring back the hair that we actually want to preserve. So again, with a, uh, with a fairly solid background, that works great. And um, that's really all you would have to do. But in the case of this background, because we have this uh, lightness gradation going across here, so it's darker here and then lighter towards the center, um, we can really see that as soon as we did that, we've actually changed the background here. And that's immediately noticeable that we did something um, to cover up stray hair. So we don't want that look. Now we could change the blend mode to lighten. The problem with that is though that um, even though we're lightening and we're preserving the background now, the stray hairs themselves have been lightened with the darker color from here. So they're still darker than the background behind it. So, you know, this gets us part of the way there, but it's really not what we're looking for either. So basically we need to come up with a way to get rid of the high frequency detail in the hair and leave just the low frequency color behind it. Now you're probably thinking I'm going to go into some sort of frequency separation uh, trick. Well, I'm actually not. For the first time, I am not going to use frequency separation in a video, but we are going to uh, use kind of the concept, which is basically uh, the idea of blurring. So um, what blurring essentially does is it takes some pixel value, looks at the pixels around it and comes up with a new average for that pixel value. So that's kind of what we want here. We want to really just take the pixel value of the stray hair and look at the colors around it and replace it with that color value. So the first thing that you know I tried obviously is going into uh, Gaussian blur. So if we go into Gaussian blur at um, around nine pixels, we see that it's you know it's kind of getting us there. It's getting rid of the detail in the hair, but the hairs themselves are blurring out and actually causing uh, the color to show up in our background. So that's really not what we want and not terribly helpful. So we can raise our radius, which will get rid of the actual uh, detail in the hair. But the problem is that it actually starts to blend in um, this main chunk of hair. It's actually blurring out and blending into the background as well. So uh, we're now going to be left with this big fringe um, at the end, which again, not really terribly helpful for us. So um, luckily though, there is a blur tool out there that can help us. So first thing you're going to do is hit command J to duplicate your layer. And then you're going to go into filter blur and you're going to use surface blur. And basically the way surface blur works is that it um, performs a blur up until it hits a certain threshold point. So whenever it notices a change in color or contrast, it will stop the blur there. So it won't actually bleed in this color into whatever area is within the threshold area. So uh, the, the sensitivity of that actual uh, area is denoted by the threshold itself. So if we crank this threshold up, then as you can see, it's a lot more forgiving as far as where it blurs into. If we lower it, it's much more um, tight in terms of these, these sort of edges that it detects. So if we go down to a level around, let's say 23, there we go, 23. Um, we can see that it's actually giving us more or less what we want because it's going to preserve the actual detail of the main chunk of hair, but it starts to get rid of the detail in these small strands that are sticking out. And um, 
in addition to the threshold, you're gonna have to experiment with the radius as well, because if you crank the radius up really high, it really doesn't make too much of a difference actually beyond a certain point. Um, the radius doesn't really do much as far as the actual stray hairs are concerned. So um, just find a point where it's not too high, but don't uh, make sure it's not too low either, because if it's too low, then you'll kind of see the same effect that we saw when we first tried the Gaussian blur, which is um, it's going to blur out the um, strand of hair and actually introduce the color of the hair into the background. And we don't want that. So we want it high enough that it neutralizes that out. And so that seems to happen between 40 and 50 in our case. But again, it will vary depending on the resolution of your image and, and other factors, obviously how big your subject is in relation to the image. So um, basically just go in and try and get to this sort of result. So play with your threshold. Again, that will vary depending on if you have a blonde model, the color of your background and things like that. So play around with it and you should pretty quickly be able to get to the results that will look good. So click OK on that. And um, again, depending on the speed of your computer, Surface Blur may take a very long time or not too long. So um, you may need to go and grab a cup of coffee if that is going to take a long time for you. Um, but with a pretty fast machine, you shouldn't take too long. Now, uh, we're getting to a pretty good point here, but I'm not quite happy with it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Filter, Blur, and Surface Blur one more time. From here, I'm going to lower down my threshold to 17, because now that we've actually cleaned up the bulk of it, we don't need to have it as high. We're going to click OK, run it again, and now we're actually starting to look pretty good, I think. Uh, so we're going to create a new layer over top of that. I'm just going to tidy up a couple of these last little bits here. So. A um, couple of options we have available to us. I can just grab a small um, brush and just clone stamp uh, to finish things off here. So because we're, we're cloning and stamping from so close in, uh, we shouldn't really mess up the colors too much here uh, like we did before. Uh, because again, we're just we're sampling from here to here. So uh, there shouldn't be too much of a lightness shift at that point. Something like this, we can just get rid of uh, using our clone stamp tool nice and close as well. You could use the healing brush tool. Uh, you know, at this point, it's pretty easy to remove something like this compared to the mess that we had before. So I'm just going to quickly clean this up. Again, you could use the healing brush here, whatever works well for you. In your case, it may clean up everything perfectly too. It just varies depending on the particular scenario that you might have. And then we're just going to take care of this little cluster here. So I think that's pretty good. And uh, let's just zoom out and we're going to create a stamp visible layer. So command option shift E or control alt shift E. And then we can get rid of the two layers that we have below it and holding alter option add a layer mask, which will hide everything and then grab a brush tool, nice hard brush around 70 to 80% high flow rate painting in white. We are just going to start painting over the areas we don't want to keep anymore. So this is more or less, you know, the, the same process you would take with the uh, clone stamping approach we talked at the beginning, but obviously we're getting around that issue of uh, covering up the color of our background. And so again, you're, you're probably going to be a lot more careful uh, with this than I would be. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but basically as you kind of go around and get rid of the stray hairs that you don't want, you may find that the line in your hair is a little bit too clean. So if that's the case, just create a new layer and grab a nice hard brush and just sample the colors and paint in new strands of hair um, to make it a little bit messier. Now, obviously you will need a Wacom tablet to do that because um, can't really be done with a mouse, but uh, that is a common technique for, you know, fixing up any sort of perfect edges that you may have created uh, during this process. So that's basically our tidied up image there. And uh, what we can do is just grab a solar curve there and take a look at our background and it does look pretty clean. A um, couple little areas here, but we could have just uh, done a better job of cleaning up those last bits there. But as you can see, this whole area here where we had the bulk of our issues is nice and clean. We don't have any spots like you see kind of down here introduced in this area. Um, so that's really what you want out of your background. You want to make sure that it doesn't have any sort of issues like that. Last thing we can also do is turning this on. Let's create another stamp visible layer here. And if we actually change this into difference blend mode, we can see that the main difference between these two layers 
are the actual stray hairs that we removed from them. Now, I do caution you as well that um, this won't work if you have a background that has a lot of texture in it. So if you have front to back sharpness and the background itself is important, obviously you're, you're going to blur out a lot of the texture in the background because uh, that's what we're doing here. We're trying to remove the texture. But if you have something like uh, a seamless like this with uh, a gradation or you have a blurred out background that just has some bokeh in it, uh, then this will work just fine. It won't get rid of all of that because, again, the surface blur has that threshold that it will use. So, um, again, just doesn't work if you have a ton of texture in the background. But other than that, it does work pretty universally. So try it out in different situations. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take too long to give it a go. And it can ultimately save you a lot of time. So definitely... Uh, a tool that's worth checking out and just play around with those uh, thresholds and radiuses to suit your particular needs. So until next time, be sure to hit that subscribe button below this video so you don't miss any future videos. And also like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrant shot. Bye for now.